Good morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the meeting for uh, today, June 23rd. And um, apparently we have a couple of cases that uh, are not going to, going to be heard today. The first case has requested a uh, postponement. Uh, so we're going to need a motion and uh, to accept this postponement. Or we can go ahead and hear it. It's up to uh, everyone. What do you What do you guys think? What is our standard for prior notice? Is it three days in advance of the meeting? As I recall, I'm not sure if we have anything specifically for emergencies. But uh, you know, he's saying that there was an emergency, and that's, and that's the reason that he's requesting a postponement. Well, a work thing. I don't know if that. It's not a health thing. It's you know got a conference to go to or something. I'm not disposed to it, but please speak up, colleagues. Well, that that was the first thing I thought. I mean, especially especially now that we're doing this online, you know, you can be anywhere. Just get on your phone and do the hearing. Or I wasn't really too. Uh, inclined to do any postponement because I don't know how the schedule is for the full year, you know, or for the next few weeks. We can but hear the case without the appellant, we right? Have not. Yes. Right, okay. but his case is in there. But historically, I don't believe that. Mary, you disappeared. Okay, um, I don't think historically we have done work emergencies as a reason that we've extended. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The only thing I'm thinking is we have a pretty light day. Was it tomorrow? I think there's only three cases. So if we wanted to give them one day and give them a chance to come in tomorrow, otherwise we could hear it tomorrow. Do we have a notion that he would? Yeah. He only needs one day. Uh, I don't know how many days we do. We have to give them if we postpone. Do we have to give them a specific notice or just let him know? Uh, you know what? We probably have to give a new notice of a new date. Yeah, I think so. Why don't we just right? But do he's this. asking for the postponement. I think how we could do this is if we just go ahead and say we will try and accommodate you we'll do this tomorrow if you can't do it like jose said you can call in from anywhere if he's been sent somewhere for work you know and it's it's approximately 20 minutes of time so yeah you know not knowing the full agenda you know as far as putting him in someplace else it's been scheduled and it's been scheduled you know he's had certainly more than enough time historically we have not allowed it so I'm fine with one day since the schedule is light tomorrow, but I, you know, otherwise I would say I would want to hear it. Let's do that. I, I'm, I'll make the motion that we offer tomorrow as an alternative date, and if he denies, if he doesn't want to do that, then he missed his chance basically. I'll second it. So what are we going to do before we do the vote? Are we going to just uh, give him the information that it's postponed for tomorrow, and if he doesn't, what do we do? Just hear it tomorrow? Yeah, we'll hear it tomorrow, whether he shows or not. Okay. All right, we have a motion to postpone this uh, case for uh, tomorrow, and we have a second by Mary Hogan. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it's all unanimous, no opponent, opponents. Uh, it is postponed for tomorrow, June 24th. And then we have the second case, RPC 3201239. Uh, they requested a withdrawal. Anybody opposed to the withdrawal? No? All right. No. I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we accept the withdrawal for uh, case number two. I'll second. Mary Dooley. We have a motion and a second to by Mary Duly to postpone the case, I mean to withdraw the case. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? No one? Okay, so it is withdrawn. Okay. And uh, we're going to go to the third case, RPC 140230. 
1108 North Stafford Street. Uh, do we have uh, Mr. Kuhn on the... Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I right. wasn't able to get in on my computer, so I'm actually on my um, iPhone. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kuhn. Uh, we, uh, I know we heard your case last year, and uh, as you are familiar, we are going to kill your case. We have eight minutes to start. Uh, before we start this case, let me just uh, do this as a quick uh, disclosure. I am, uh, I know Mr. Kuhn. We go to the same church, and uh, the same as last year. This is not going to uh, impact any decision or information that I have in this case, so I'm going to proceed and stay with the case. Uh, you can go ahead and start with your eight minutes, Mr. Kuhn. Okay, thank you. The one thing I will say is that my audio is not great, so I may have to ask you sometimes to repeat something. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, uh, all board members, for the work you do, and I appreciate your time and commitment to this process. I also have to tell you that I did not expect that I would need to appear before you as the, before the Board of Equalization this year. In 2019, I did appear. I presented to the then board members justification and hard data as to why the assessment for my property at 1108 North Stafford Street was above fair market value. After reviewing the facts, the outcome reached by members of the Board of Equalization was that the assessed value be reduced from 573600 to 558900 Fast forward to notification of the 2020 Arlington County assessment. My property assessment was raised to 573600 the exact number that it was reduced from in 2019. So at the time when I got the assessment, I took a look to see what was happening in the community around me, and specifically my condominium complex. The complex where my property is located consists of 20 condominium units. They're piggyback style. There are below grade one level units on the ground level, and then there are two level above grade townhouses above uh, the one level below grade units for, again, a total of 20 units. Mine was the only unit of the 20 that had an increase in the assessment. The other assessments all remained the same from 2019 to 2020. So that was perplexing to me and I reached out to the county um, real estate assessment office requesting an explanation for what the determination was to to increase the assessment on my property. I received the following reply from Mr. Jorg uh, Kabalja, and I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. The reason your unit saw an increase because, was because it went back to 2019 original value. Without the BOE's override, there would have been no increase in 2020. So I guess my question is, is the policy of Arlington County Real Estate Assessment Office to reverse the decisions of the BOE? Furthermore, what is the explanation? There was no data or justification for an increased assessment other than it was to override the Board, board of Equalization decision. In supplying comparable properties, the Assessment Office continues to choose non-similar properties. I'm sure you're familiar with the term above grade finished space and below grade finished space. You've been provided with pictures of my unit and you can clearly see that it is below grade, one level, and therefore is valued differently than the above grade two-story townhouse style properties that are the only comparables the assessment office includes with their reports. Additionally, I'm sure you all remember July 8, 2019, when there was a significant rain stating flooding to properties when the Arlington County storm drains backed up. Hopefully, none of you were directly impacted by that event. 
my below grade property was affected by that flood. I suffered costly damage that was not covered by insurance and did not occur in upper level above grade townhouse style units in the community. I do not understand why the appraiser would provide information to both myself and to you, the Board of Equalization, that did not include nearby one level properties on Vermont Street that sold within the dates of September 1st, 2018 and August 31st, 2019 for under 536,000. These properties need to be a part of the information for you to make your informed determinations. Additionally, the appraiser has supplied comments that have been provided to you. I have clearly provided my explanation and justification for my request for the 2020 value to remain at the 2019 value consistent with the other 19 properties in the old Boston Square community. I note in the appraiser's comments, first paragraph, no interior inspection due to quarantine. Yet, in the comments, there is a reference to other models in the community. Were those inspected? I have addressed that fact. I have addressed the fact, excuse me, that my unit has not been remodeled or upgrade it while the other units have been. The appraiser comments acknowledge that the kitchen and baths are the original. For your information, one bathroom is avocado green, the other is harvest gold. The valuation term for that is functionally obsolete. There is a reference to a new kitchen floor. The kitchen floor in the, that the appraiser is commenting about was put in seven years ago at a cost of $250. The comments go on to state that although the kitchen and bathroom might be original, please note they are original, they have been well cared for and their original high quality build construction makes them not feel dated or old. Given these comments that no inspection, in interior inspection was done, I find it to be unprofessional to make personal qualifications on something that has admit, admittedly not been seen. I'm wondering where are the spe specifications for the original construction materials that they can be classified as being of such great high quality. And I will say as a long-term contributor to the Arlington County tax revenue, I'm offended by the use of personal opinions in this description. The comments go on to reference high original bill quality still appears fine and does not seem outdated or in need of renovation. Again, those are personal opinions made without any direct inspection. For the board's information, uh, there's also comments about rental of the property. The property has been for rent for over 90 days. It is currently vacant. I strongly disagree with the comments expressed at the level of, about the level of desirability we are in the midst of a pandemic. Unemployment is at record levels, and it has been difficult for me to find a renter. In summary, I, I have received no justification from the Arlington County Assessment Office for an increase other than to reverse the Board of Directors' decision. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Kern. Um, Mr. Carvajal, uh, you can go ahead and go with your eight minutes. All right, thank you, board. <clears throat> the subject is located in the old Boston Square condo, which is a neighborhood of 20 piggyback style townhomes. No interior inspection occurred, uh, but the homeowner was kind enough to provide us with some pictures of the exterior. Last year, this property saw the same 3% increase as all other 20 units in this complex. This property appeared before the BOE last year where the value was reduced back to its 2018 value. Um, the appellant had a couple questions about the values changing after being changed by the BOE. I'd like to go into that a little bit. Although the subject was reduced last year by the BOE, the reduced value does not stay fixed year after year. Each year, every neighborhood is individually analyzed during our analysis period. When we conducted the analysis for the subject's neighborhood, we did not have any sales, which is not that uncommon for a neighborhood with only 20 units. 
what we do then is compare this condo townhome neighborhood to others in the area that are similar. Although not sharing the same condo fees or amenities, the condo townhomes that are near can give us a rough estimate of value to see if we are on the right track or if changes are needed. That being said, the department feels that the subject's neighborhood is closer to the underassessed side of valuation, but without definitive data, the conservative decision was made not to make any changes to the assessed values for 2020 for the subject's neighborhood. The subject was brought back to its original 2019 assessment, which the department feels is an accurate opinion of market value. With the unit being brought back to its original 2019 value, all 20 units saw the same equitable increase in value over the last two years, and the subject had the same increase as other ground level units identical to it. This was reviewed in the memo to the BOE. This was also explained to the appellant via our email conversations found in the BOE packet. During our analysis period, this neighborhood was reviewed to make sure that all 20 units were equalized with each other, and they were. Smaller units have smaller assessments, larger units would have larger assessments, and models that had unusual characteristics, like being located partially underground like the subject, were taken into consideration, and the appropriate changes to value had already been taken care of. Ground level units have lower base values than above grade townhome style units. This applies even to in-ground units that are larger in size than those above them. I'd like to point out to the board that of the 20 units in this complex, there are six separate floor plans with differing square footages. In fact, the two largest floor plans, one of which is the subject's model, are both below grade and have smaller assessments than even the smallest above grade townhome style unit. The subject's increase is due to our methodology, which we apply to every residential parcel in the county. The department believes that there is no issue with the subject's market value or equalization amongst the 20 units in this neighborhood. If the subject's value is reduced, it will not be equitable with the other 20 units. The comps that were used show the limited amount of sales we see of similar type units in this area. If you take a look at the comp sheet, comp one, was the last sale that occurred in this neighborhood. That was in the summer of 2018. Due to limited sales, comps two and three were pooled from a similar neighborhood two blocks away. Although comps two and three are not in-ground units, they demonstrate market value in the area, and by looking at historical trends, we can deduce that the subject's in-ground unit will be somewhere close but below these units' value. It seems that most people that purchase these units <laughs> either love to live in them um, or they keep them as investment properties because unfortunately for us, they don't sell that often. So we don't have enough market data. I'll tell you this, the last open market transaction in this neighborhood that occurred of an in-ground unit similar to the subject sold in 2006. This sale was sold in as in condition, the listing had one picture and it had all the markings of a unit still in its original condition. This unit sold in 2006, 14 years ago, for 520,000. The, department rec the department's recommendation for the board is to confirm the 2020 assessment at 573,600, which by looking at sales in the area and how its assessment is equalized with the other 20 units located in this neighborhood can be confirmed as equitable and fair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carvajal. Uh, do we have any questions from the board to either the appellant or the county? Go ahead, uh, Greg. Yeah, um, in the, uh, I guess the department's write-up, there was a reference to RPC 1402340, but then it's not used as a comp. So I, I'm trying to look it up, and I, it looks like it's 1109 North Stewart, and it, and that's like an identical, that's the one that has the same floor plan? Yes, sir. It's identical to the subject. Um, I, I submitted some photographs of the uh, the unit, the subject unit's exterior, and that unit 1109's exterior, um, they're right across from each other. A sidewalk separates them, uh, but okay. they are the same model, and they do currently have the same assessment. And you're... And, and, Comparable quality, um, no major renovations in one versus the other. You think your, your understandings are pretty similar? 
Uh, as far as we know, but like I said, we are limited with the market data. When people list these as rentals or for sale, that's when we really get to take a look at the inside. Um, for this building, like I had mentioned, the original build quality was high uh, for 1981. Um, by looking at all the listing photographs, um, and after you take a look at the building um, in detail like we have, you're able to identify what an original kitchen looks like or what an original bathroom looks like. Uh, we know what the original kitchen cabinets look like. We can tell if the cabinets have been replaced or if they've just been painted. Um, so we, when we do get those listing photographs, we're pretty good at identifying what's original and what's been updated. Um, but we're limited to the information that we have. Okay. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ken. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat? The microphone is off, Ken. I'm sorry, I'm not um, understanding what you... For, for the department, two interrelated questions. The three comparables, one, are they both above ground, and two, are they both two-level townhomes? And if not, what's the difference? Sure, like I, um, yes, they are all above grade townhome units. Um, comparable one was the last sale that occurred in the subject's neighborhood, the yeah, last yeah. one of those 20 that sold. Um, that was included just to show you what market value is in that neighborhood. Comparable two and three are in a separate neighborhood about two blocks away. Um, they are above ground units, um, but we showed them for just as a representation of market value in that area. Um, we do take into consideration that the subject's unit is below grade, and even though the subject might have a larger square footage than, a, than the above grade units, its assessment is still lower um, to take into account the fact that it is partially in ground. Uh, just to follow up on that, Mr. Carvajal, isn't that a two-level unit, though, instead of uh, just one level, as it is the subject? Correct. The above grade units uh, are two level, um, but they they vary in, in size. Um, and actually, of the six floor plans that are in this neighborhood, the subject and one other model have the largest square footage uh, of even the above grade units. So even though they're below grade and they're only one level, um, the square footage is, is larger um, than the above grade units. Okay. Um, I'm going to follow up with a different question. I recall this uh, case last year we had reduced it because it was compared to a different community, which is uh, located, I think, south of Wilson Boulevard. Uh, they're also the same, you know, piggyback townhomes, but they are not really, uh, and they were totally different. So I know that I had uh, disagreed that it was, you know, they were not good comparables. And I think this year we're doing the same. I think we're using comparables of a different community, uh, like the comp comparable number two, comparable number three. Uh, those are also townhome condominiums, but they are three levels. And I don't think they really compare to this subject. Right. So what we were trying to show, like, like I mentioned, the... In order for us to find a sale of an in-ground unit, it's difficult in this area. Um, like I mentioned, people like to hold on to them either because they like to live in them or they like them as investment properties, but they just don't sell. So when we don't see a particular model sell, we can't just keep the assessment where it is. We have to trend it with what the rest of the neighborhood is. We see that these above grade townhomes uh, are increasing in value. So we deduce that the the below grade ones are as well. We take into consideration that the below ground units aren't going to be as desirable as the above grade townhome units, um, but that's reflected in the the base value. Um, even though the the subject is below grade, um, it has a larger square footage. It has technically it's two bedrooms with a den, um, but it, it looks like a three bedroom. Um, even though the square footage is larger than the above grade units, the fact that it's partially in ground, uh, that's why it has a lower base value and a lower assessment. So we, we do the best we can with the sales we have available. Um, I know there was, I, I did listen 
to the audio of last year's BOE, um, and there were concerns about the comps. So I wanted to make sure this year we had comps that weren't that far away, um, hence why we selected the comps that we did. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, I have a question. Go ahead, Mary. Um, okay, um, when I look at the grid, and this is for the county, um, on comp one, and again, that was a sale from 2018, and you're just giving us the total assessment for this year of the 542. What I'm struggling with here is that's above ground. It's Yes, it is smaller, and it's just how it's cut up. It's three bedrooms, but it's got two bedrooms and a half, and that's assessed above ground at 542, and our appellant is assessed at 573. So how do you factor in the difference there? We factor in the difference with the unit's uh, base value, basically the base value for the um, for the unit. Um, if you look at the subject, its uh, total assessed value is 573,600, but its base value is only 503,000. So on top of that value, we'll add land, um, any any other characteristics that have value. So uh, comparable one has a base value of, let me find it here. Mm. Sorry, having trouble right now finding the, the base value before it, but I, I do know that it has a higher base value than the subject. Well, I, I guess if it has a higher base value, because it's, which it should, because it's above ground, it's just totally different from our subject property. I don't see how it can adjust out lower when it has an extra half bath and an actual third designated bedroom. Right. So I that's actually, I'm struggling with. no, that's fine. I understand where you're coming from. I actually want to apologize. I think you just discovered a typo in our comp sheet. I pulled up the assessment for that comp one. We currently have that assessed at 633,700. So I'm not sure where that that 542 came from. I apologize. Well, that makes a huge difference. I apologize. Um, okay, and and I assume that 1108 and 1109 are the only two below grade out of all the units. No, ma'am. There are 20 units in this complex. Um, if you look at the building from the street, you'll see what looks like 12 townhome units that are above grade. Mm -hmm. And below that, mm -hmm. there are eight units that are partially below grade. Um, so there's actually eight that are below grade. And so are all the eight that are below grade, all two bedroom with a den and two baths? Uh, there are three floor plans that are below grade. One is the subject, which is two bedroom with den, 1,400 square feet. The other one is a two bedroom with den, 1,500 square feet. And the below grade units that are in the middle, sandwiched between the end units, are only 735 square feet, one bedroom. Okay, so are the, you said, I think you said there's three then? that are similar to the subject property, including the subject property? Identical to the subject, there's only one other. And is that assessment at 573.6? Correct. Okay, I only have comments left. I don't have any more questions. Okay, um, anybody else, any other questions? No? I um, understand that at some point I also get to have yeah, you're, to speak. Is that correct? you're going to have a one minute uh, wrap up, Mr. Kuhn. Uh, we're going to go to wrap ups now uh, with Mr. Carvajal, starting with uh, one minute, and then you will follow with one minute. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure, thank you. Um, the department doesn't have anything new to add. Um, all that we ask is that the Board, please take into consideration that all these, all 20 units are equalized amongst themselves. Uh, we're, we're already taking into consideration that there are eight units in this complex that are below grade, 
um, and their current assessments reflect that. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead, Mr. Kern, with your uh, one minute wrap up. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, you know, th the point here is that last year, the Board of Equalization made a decision and reduced the assessment to 558,900 or whatever. There were no increases in the assessments of the other 19 properties. And there's been no justification other than the board reduced it last year. And it was, you know, I presented, you listened, the Arlington County Assessment Office presented, and, and the board made a decision. So it's not like there was a increase in the other properties assessments this year. They all stayed the same. I have not received an explanation other than reversing the board's decision as to why it was increased. The other thing I want to say is these units are like blocks. So when you say the square footage is bigger, there are two townhouses on top of mine. So there's no difference in square footage. Underneath, Underneath if you look at a picture, there's an unfinished storage room that's added as part of square footage that's under somebody else's porch. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kern. Your uh, one minute is uh, up. Uh, it's thank going to you. be it's going to be among the board members now. Um, and see where we stand. I know it's. Uh, I mean, we have limited information, but let's see where everybody stands. Any comments? I'll say I'll I'll start. Uh -huh. That's okay. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, initially, I, I guess one there's some confusion on the appellant's part of that the um, county has reversed our decision, and I, I don't believe he understands that it is for one year only. And so that that was not a problem that they did it. It's just that they felt last year and obviously this year that there's no difference. Um, what I'm struggling with, and, and also he, he brought up that he's offended by the opinion that was that the county uses opinion. And this is not a science. This is a subjective measure, whether it's a fee appraisal or if it's, you know, for tax assessments. Initially, when I looked at this, I kind of leaned a little bit towards reducing it. But as I look at this and I, I see the comp one, I mean, the key thing here was that it's not assessed at 542, that it's really assessed at 633. That certainly helps me, you know, lean more towards, you know, the county's decision here. The problem that I'm struggling with, and I see that, you know, the appellant is saying, well, nobody else got increased, but nobody else was decreased last year. So that being said, it is all equalized now. There are no additional sales to say that it's higher or lower. But I, to say that a property in this location has stayed the same for two years, I think that's probably an understatement. That's my opinion. So I, I would struggle with reducing this again. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Ken, go ahead. You have, your microphone is off. You need to turn your mic microphone. <laughs> It's unlike me to mute. I guess I'm getting wiser in my old age. Uh, I just wanted to make the comment that the comparables two and three sure seem underassessed to me. I mean, the various uh, projects in this part of Boston are very, very similar. And based on the, um, the sales prices, I know they're kind of edging out of the, the um, you know, study period. Nonetheless, there's a big gap between the assessment and, and, and the sales prices. And I, I think the county ought to look at that neighborhood as well. And otherwise, I'm with Mary. She stole my two. One, that it wasn't clear that whatever the BOE does, it's only for one year, uh, period. That's it. And, and second, uh, the comparable one was misstated originally and now makes me feel a lot more comfortable with the restatement. OK. Anybody else? Any any other comments? No. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you what I think. Originally, I thought the same as uh, Mary that you know this maybe um, should go back to the uh, to last uh, year's uh, reduction. 
Oh, well, last year I had the trouble, like I said, with the comparables that were used that were a totally different community that, to me, they did not compare at all. And these comparables, comparable number two and three, to me are the same. Um, you know, I don't think they really compare, and I know it's hard to find something that is close to uh, to the subject and uh, that are similar, you know, a piggyback townhomes that, uh, to, that are one level. But uh, my problem is that uh, I thought maybe the other unit that is very similar to the subject should also be uh, valued at the same level. Now, since none of the units there were increased, and I know maybe they're all underassessed, but, you know, I think for the purposes of equalization, I think they should go back to we should go back to the value that we said uh, last year, because that's what we had established uh, based on, uh, you know, sales at the time. And if nobody else has increased, then I think, you know, the, the fair way to treat uh, uh, this unit would be this, to go back to the same uh, as it was last year. You know, maybe sales will be, will have to be reviewed overall to adjust everybody, not just one. So my, my inclination is really to go back to last year and see what happens. Yeah, Jose, if we were to do that, um, I think we got to look at 1109 equalizing that property too. I agree. I agree. Uh, that was my that was my initial reaction is that making making sure now that we know that there's a basically an identical unit, we just need to make sure they're on the same uh, the same assessment. Yeah. Right, but do you think that this property has not seen an increase for two years with the location of the whole development? Well, if they had, then, you know, the adjustment should be to all of them, to the whole community. And so far, nobody has, nobody else, you know, all the other 19 units have not been, you know, they haven't seen an increase. That's my only. Right, that's I understand it. that, but the, he's seeing an increase because we lowered it last year. Right. But we lowered it based on what we thought it was the, the correct uh, value, and uh, you know, I'm still struggling with that. And I like Greg. I think if we make a reduction in this, then the other unit also should be reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I remember having quite a debate last year about the comps and everything, and uh, coming to the conclusion that we wanted to reduce it. Um, and I don't really feel like I got a, a better sense of comps, other than knowing that there's another unit out there that's identical that's assessed it that you know probably should have come in as well last year and um, or at least been equalized. I don't know. We, that was probably an oversight on our part to not equalize. It. Greg, what do you think about the sale price of those the comps compared to their assessed values? If they're above grade, I, I mean, it's above. hard to. Yeah. I would think they've all moved up. I mean, I, I'm looking at sales price and where the county's assessing them, and there's a get, big gap there. Yeah, um, I do know that. You know, this is a residential property being used as a rental property and I can tell there's been a being in the industry there's a there's a pretty stark difference between rental rate increases and for sale product increases absolutely and this is more of a rental property than a for sale home that somebody would go out and buy and you know the typical for sale buyer and so if you see the above grade ones that are trading at 3% higher you know, in 2019 versus 2018, you might not get the equivalent um, difference in value because uh, you really can't change the rent if the rents haven't gone up. So that's my opinion. I don't know. I, I'm I'm siding more with Jose towards going back to last year and then equalizing the other property and then, you know, put them on the same footing and look, if we start to see neighborhood increases again over there, then, you know, they're going to both kind of be at the same starting point. Anybody else? Any other comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. 
comfortable with Greg and, and Jose's assessment uh, because we're just picking a number out of the air. I, having not been a part of BOE last year, I listened careful to, carefully, and it was one of my notes from when I read this the other day, on why you reduced it. And now I understand that the, the department didn't make a, uh, didn't provide good uh, empirical analysis on why it should be at 573, how you lowered it 15,000 and not 25 or five, I don't know. But the, the department didn't make the case. I think this year they made the case a little better, um, trending with <clears throat> Mary saying it's intuitively, <clears throat> excuse me, not possible that the value has stayed the same in, in a, a nice project in two years or three years. I don't know what it was in 2018. Um, uh, so I don't know if it's two or three. Um, but just picking numbers out of a hat saying, well, let's just go back to last year because it's last year's um, makes me uncomfortable. There's no thing to pick on, no cost, no solid number to, to gauge it, to reduce it to five, um, 58 or 568 or 548. And, um, and, and fortunately, a comparable one now shows, uh, in terms of the assessed value, a lot more positively than it did before. That was just out of whack before. Um, and, and I just have nothing to hang some other number on. Um, so the last question is, however, having said all of that, um, to reduce the direct um, uh, same unit in the project down to some number that we pick. Um, is, is that automatically doable? Or, you know, how, what is the process for that so that we know if we vote this to 558, that one will absolutely become 558? Is the department, can the department address that? Uh, well, we, we can't, uh, you know, we're not going to get into a debate with the department now, but uh, we have done that before, you know, um, not only with uh, condos, but townhomes. If, they, if we see that they're similar and we feel that the OC should be adjusted, then we can ask the, um, for the reduction to be uh, taken on those properties also. So it's... We can ask, is it, is it a done deal? What's the protocol? No. No, not, not necessarily. I mean, we can, we, we can reduce the assessment that we don't really have. I don't think last year we did anything with any other units because, you know, like most cases, that's the only owner that requests a reduction and, you know, that's the only case we deal with. But knowing in this case that that's the only identical unit, uh, you know, without really going into details so of what improvements they have, I thought based on that and based on the fact that there, none of the other units have seen an increase, that, that was my reason to, uh, you know, be in favor of a reduction. And it wasn't just a number that we picked. I think it was just it was, the previous, it was, it previous was a, year's assessment. It was a 2018 assessment value. Right. Uh, right. I, I will say that, I mean, I agree that if you're going to lower one, you got to lower the other. And, you know, that certainly can happen. But I still come back to the premise that just because a below grade unit hasn't sold that they don't have something to tie it to doesn't mean that the value hasn't gone up you know and certainly in this area where it's located this is not a declining market this is not a market that has been stable for two years and the only reason it's going up is because we lowered it last year now looking at from a standpoint of equalization which that's what we should be looking at you know, this is equalized with the other properties in that in that association. Yeah. I mean, when you look at Comp One, you know, and they've done the right thing, looking outside of the actual development. If there's no comps that have sold in there, that's what they have to do. A fee appraiser would have done the same thing if it was for lending purposes. So we do see sales. We do see. The market is certainly more than stable, if not increasing. So I, I really struggle with reducing this and reducing another unit. I think it takes it out of equalization with the other remaining units in the project. All right, Mary, you convinced me. I'm uh, I'm looking back at my notes from last year, and base. I mean, we picked it. It wasn't arbitrary. We just wanted to hold steady with 2018, right? 2019. It what? But we didn't have a, you know, this unit has an extra bay window or something. There wasn't a an adjustment, it was just holding steady with 18. Um, 
So, but I can I can get with your rationale that property values have not been flat for two years, and that um, on the basis of equalization, I can see how the department would make the case to bring it in line. And uh, you know, the burden ultimately rests with the appellant to make a more of a compelling case. So, I'm I'm with you, Mary. Okay. Uh, anybody would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I, I will. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to confirm the county's recommendation. I'll second Mary Dooley. Okay, we have a motion from Mark to confirm the assessment and a second by Mary Dooley. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we have five, and I will vote against. So it is five to one. And so for this year, the assessment is being confirmed, Mr. Kern. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We, we're going to go to the. Uh, does anybody want to take a break or uh, should we just go on? I'd like to go on. Okay. Keep going. Uh, we're going to go to the fourth case, uh, RPC 1304102657136 Street North. Uh, do we have Mr. Barak? Yes, you have me. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you can. Uh, you have eight minutes to present your case, so you can go ahead and start with it. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, um, you know, our, we, we live in, um, I guess what you could consider a sub neighborhood of Bluemont, uh, Bon Air, which has, uh, an eclectic mix of older houses. Um, so, and, and some newer ones that have been more recently constructed. Uh, so it's not a, like a 1940s development where you've just got, you know, a thousand colonials that are you know, easy to compare to each other. It's, it's really sort of a random uh, mix. Um, so I think that makes the, the county's standardized appraisal method less accurate. Uh, uh, I'm concerned that they're you know, also, because it's a relatively small sub neighborhood that has some, you know, unique characteristics being right next to Bluemont Park um, and bordered on, you know, by uh, the Bluemont Junction Trail and then Wilson Boulevard, um, even other houses in Bluemont that are not that far away are not going to be exactly uh, comparable. Um, and I'm concerned in, the, in this case, because there are a limited number of sales of similar houses to ours, um, the county's process that automatically ignores, um, as it was described to me by the, the, uh, uh, the Mr. Ulysse, the, the, uh, the ones that have a sales code, um, as if those prices are sort of invalid or just can't be you know used in any way at least in their system i think that really uh, causes this rise in our case uh, so to speak to the county's comparables uh, 503 north, north jefferson street uh, the effective age that the county has is 2004 which is nearly 40 years newer than the effective age they have for our property uh, has more bedrooms, uh, more external features, and also it backs right up to the Bluemont Junction Trail, which ours certainly doesn't, which guarantees that there's no future development that will ruin the backyard view of trees and everything. Uh, 5602 Fifth Street North, um, again, the effective age that uh, is 40 years newer than ours. Um, it has a larger finished area and it also backs up to the Bluemont Junction Trail, which we don't. Uh, and then finally, their, their last comp is 700 North Greenbrier Street, uh, where the effective age is 1998 um, versus 1965 for ours. Uh, and ours was first built in 1950. Uh, this, this one has a much, uh, has much more finished area and a larger lot uh, and a wood deck in back. Uh, we don't have anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> it's also in a much more walkable location. So it's a five minute walk to Safeway. In Pupatella, uh, where it would take 15 minutes for us to walk there, uh, and also one mile uh, to Ballston, which is a half mile closer than us. So I think the walkability is probably a key factor there uh, for someone you know, looking at that property. 
Um, so I would like to ask you to also consider um, the comparables I've listed in our appeal. Um, and just to be a more in our house, we have only two bedrooms. So it's too small for most families in the market um, who are looking for a single family home. Uh, and it's not cost effective as a rental because you only got two bedrooms and a lot of the values in the land. So the most likely purchaser, I believe, is a developer who would just tear the house down, even though it's in decent shape. Um, the five comparable sales I've identified are more appropriate, I think, in the counties in terms of the property age and features and location. So 5716 8th Street North sold for just under 500000 uh, in late 2018. Same lot size. This was listed as a, a land sale as a resource protection area, and it was torn down and replaced with a you know, $1.4 million house. Um, so I'm not saying we should be at 500,000 because maybe there's something special about this particular property that made it very low value, but certainly I think that should weigh downward on our value. 5611 7th Street North, uh, so 600,000, uh, same lot size. It's a newer house with more bedrooms and, and a larger finished area than ours. Uh, we have a, a detached uh, garage, which we don't. Uh, so North Kensington Street sold for uh, 587. It's a lot of market deal. It was a teardown, but before the teardown, it was a Cape Cod with four bedrooms, two and a half baths, which is more than us, also um, a larger finished area than we have. Uh, 704 North Jefferson Street uh, sold for 660. Uh, it's a larger lot, more bed and bath, more finished area, has a wood deck. Uh, 5637 6th Street North uh, sold for 655. That was a short sale, but that was a Cape Cod with a much larger finished area uh, and more beds and baths. And if I could throw one more in, 5714 4th Street North, which is another not market sale for about 650, uh, also a larger finished and unfinished area and as a garage. So um, I know it's difficult to, you know, because of the, the nature of the neighborhood to come up with an exact comp or value. Um, and, you know, I, as far as what I believe the property is worth, I don't think it's worth less than we paid for it, which is 621. Um, but I, I really don't believe you, you know, fairly say that as of January 1st, we should be over 650. I'll even um, you know, where exactly it should be. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, you're going to start with your eight minutes, Mr. Ely. May I touch you, please? May I touch you, please? We're being conducted a final test on the 14th floor. So we'll leave the house. Thank you. Uh, good morning, board. Uh, nice to see we can still get our job done while observing safe social distancing. Uh, my first case this year is also my first COVID-19 case, meaning no interior and exterior inspection was conducted for this review, and the county did the best it could with the information available, given the subject's somewhat recent sale. As a result, the county used MRIS listing pictures from the subject's most recent sale. A uh, quick description of the property is that it's a one-story frame basement with two bedrooms and two baths. Uh, with a year built of 1950 and an effective age of 1965 and a quality of average plus. Uh, the appellant feels they're not being fairly assessed when they compare themselves to inferior homes that are most, mostly getting bought by developers and remodeled. The appellant also cites deferred maintenance issues to his property as reasons to lower the subject's assessment. The property's condition is in a much more livable state than most of the comps provided by the appellant. His comps mostly have inferior qualities and earlier effective ages. The subject's assessment is, is also supported by the overall analysis for the neighborhood that shows a strong sale to assessment ratio of 97.5% with only three sales having a ratio over one, with two, two seeming to outliers given their NB distinction, which stands for no basement. One of these comps also happens to be one of the comps provided by the appellant. If these comps were to be removed from the analysis, uh, the neighborhood would actually see a greater increase. Um, Appellant's neighborhood is 504044 Bonaire, increased on an average of 4.4% due to sales that occurred within the analysis period in that neighborhood. The subject increased around 5%, which is, you know, like I said, the other one's the average for the increase, so it's right around the average increase for the neighborhood. Uh, properties great and effective age appear in line with the neighborhood and current conditions. Um, 
No changes were made to the record. Uh, property last sold about five years ago, around 11, 20, uh, 2015, for 621000 uh, All this information, it is recommended that the 2020 assessment be confirmed at 651100 based on the fact that everything seems to be fair and equitable with the neighborhood and no information was removed from the record. 651 100 can also be confirmed as fair and equitable based on the yearly sales analysis that was done for the neighborhood. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from the board uh, to the appellant or to the county? Yes. I have a question. Uh, uh, go ahead, Mary. Mary? Mary, uh huh. Okay, um, for the county. Um, on the the grid of the sales, are there no sales in the neighborhood with a um, lower effective age? It just seems I think the appellant does bring up a good point that all of these uh, properties are so much newer. Well, they're they're reflective, as you can see in the sales analysis page in the packet that shows all the sales that were used, and there you can see the effective ages that correspond with the properties. Right, but were there none in that list that had a lower effective age that would have been cheap? You looked at all uh, of them. The earliest really effective age that I see is right, and the earliest effective age that I see is 1980. Uh, in looking at the subject's property, since there was no interior ins inspection done, and we looked at uh, MRIS pictures from 2015, and like I said, uh, like the record shows, it's got a 1965 effective age. Um, I'm willing, I would bet that if we did an interior inspection, that 1965 effective age might not be accurate. My guess is it's probably closer to 1980, which would put it more in line with all the other properties and still keep it, its sales and assessment ratio in line. Right, I mean, I yes, but I still think that, you know, that being said, we're using far different properties to assess this on. The same thing when you're looking at you know, comp three, it's double in size of it. But let me um, bring you to the flat map. Let's talk about the house next door, the improvements. I mean, because the land seems to be very stabilized and equalized. But what's the difference of the house next door in RPC ending 027? Uh, the house next door that the appellant brings up that um, it was one of his comps that had no basement. That's not correct. Per the county records. Okay, so if it doesn't have a basement, if that's the only difference, then there's a difference of thirteen thousand for the basement. That's that's not correct. It does have a basement. Our records show that it's. Uh, I'm looking at uh, fifty six eleven Seventh Street North, according to our records, uh, that's showing no basement. And in in the analysis, you can also see that it's one of those that is over one. An Wait, I'm sorry, you said 5711? Uh, 5611. That's the, oh. the neighbor's house. Yeah, I'm looking at 5717. Yeah. 6th Street. Uh, 5717. Okay. Um, that one does have a basement. It's, according to our records, it's unfinished. Um, when compared to the subject, uh, it's slightly smaller with an unfinished basement. Uh, with an earlier effective age, uh, and that's What's probably the most, age? Uh, 1955. Okay, certainly far closer to our subject than the comps that were used. And then yes. you said it's smaller. What's the square footage? Uh, I've got a finished square footage of 852 for for the property in question. The subject has a finished square footage of 888. And what's the quality of the of the property? Average the plus. Neighbor? Same as the subject, average plus. But just from a basis of equalization, it doesn't seem like it's equalized with the property just next door. To the closer up than the three purchases. That's where I was with this. Thank you. 
What's the question? Well, it seems like it's more in line with the property next door from a standpoint of improvements. So if you got 76-1 and the property next door is 63-2, I mean, it's a difference of, you know, $13,000, $12,900. And, I mean, the difference in square footage is approximately 30 square feet. And in this size house, that's not a lot of square feet. It's the same, you know, grade. It's smaller. It's got an unfinished basement. I don't know. I, I think it's tough to be looking at these sales that are, much newer and far larger and to say that it's equalized. But I, I guess that's more for comments. We can talk about that after questions. Yes. Um, any other questions? I have, I have one. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, to the appellant, are, have, there ever been any, have there been any improvements of, in the last year or two? No, the, the only thing of any yeah, I guess really the only thing that cost any amount of money was the air conditioner died and we had to replace that. Uh, other than that, I can't think of, no, nothing. Okay. To the county, uh, I'm looking at the the history of the tax values or the, the assessment value. I understand land going up and that makes a lot of sense, especially in a teardown type of neighborhood. But the improvements, uh, it were in 2015, 88,000. They've been going down pretty much ever since. And then this year they jumped up again. Is there a reason you brought the improvements up eight, nine thousand dollars for this year? Uh, our, co our costing table was recently readjusted. But there have been no improvements, it's just especially for the effect of age. You just adjusted the value of improvements upward even though there have been none. Yeah, Mr. Yates, this is Derek DuBay, supervisor. Yeah. Um, just for informational purposes, um, I'm following along. Just for informational purposes, this uh, neighborhood did receive improvement increases across the board. When we applied our increases on the land, we also saw that we needed to bring our location multiplier up, and that was applied on improvements across the board for the neighborhood, so. Okay. So that's in line with what everyone else jumped a little. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, just to follow up on that question uh, to the appellant, Mr. Barat, um, you said there were no improvements since, because uh, I, I looked at the pictures when the property was bought, and I know the cabinets, uh, I mean, the house was in good good shape, and I'm, sh I'm sure it still is, but, you know, you, you have the original cabinets, I think. Is the basement finished or is still unfinished? So the the basement is uh, partially finished uh, by the previous owner. So I don't have any idea of the age, um, and it was not you know <laughs> it's, it's certainly not like a top quality job. I don't know if they've even done it partly themselves. Um, so there is a, uh, a small and the ceiling is very low. You know, this, there's a small bathroom which is reflected in in the, the county records. Um, and then two rooms, one of which I'm currently sitting in, um, no heating or cooling in the basement. Um, but yeah, so it's, I, I think we estimated like roughly 30% of the basement is finished. Um, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No one else? Okay. Uh, we're going to go to uh, wrap ups. Uh, you can start with your one minute, uh, Mr. Ulysses, and then we'll continue with uh, the homeowner. All right. <clears throat> uh, the county will um, will hang its hat on its strong sales analysis for the neighborhood, as well as comp number one. Uh, we feel the comps provided by the appellant, um, especially when comparing uh, the neighbor's house uh, that the board is questioning. Uh, the main differences that we're seeing in that are the effective age and the fact that uh, there's an unfinished basement. Um, as a result, we feel that the counties, that the comps provided by the county are a more accurate reflection of the property's value, uh, as well as the fact that there was no change to the record and all our information is coming based off uh, 2015 sales information. Uh, everything for the, regarding this property as far as land and consistency seems to be fair and equitable yeah, with the neighborhood. neighborhood. And, and uh, as a as result, result uh, uh, it, 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 the, the county, county 
uh, recommends a 2020 assessment confirmation of 651 Okay, thank you. You can go and start with your wrap up, Mr. Bratton. Thank you. I heard a little bit of echo just now. I don't know if, I, hopefully it wasn't me. <laughs> I think it went all over. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I don't have much to add, uh, but, but I, I, you know, obviously I disagree with the county as far as the, the, um, they've chosen. And with regard to the property next door at 5717 6th Street North, I agree that that is the most uh, directly comparable, both in terms of location um, and in terms of the design and, and layout uh, of the house. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I would uh, also you know, point out there that the owner, you know, just in case you're questioning your mind why that owner hasn't come to ask for a reduction as well, it's owned by, it was until very recently owned by a group of people who were planning to tear it down and they've apparently been focused on other things. So they may not be paying close attention to the assessment. Uh, the good news there is it has just sold uh, just over a week ago. So next year, I, I don't think I'll have much of a basis, hopefully, to challenge, uh, you know, assuming that's uh, that's used as one of the uh, the comparisons. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to go to uh, uh, comments among the board members and see where we stand. Uh, I know there are a couple opinions that uh, may or may not change this, but where do we stand on this? Uh, go ahead, Ken. I got three points. One is, of course, the values and the, the primary values in the land, and um, and not the house. So the improvements. Then two comments. The improvement. So the the uh, appellant's approved property versus comparable one. Comparable one's clearly a better improvement, and it is assessed at forty six percent higher. And I'm going by percentages and not dollars to try to be fair. Um, so I said, wait, is it 46% better improvement now? Maybe it's significant and 46% is significant. Second, the house that, that the improvement next door that we also looked at is a reasonable thing to look at with an unfinished basement. It's the improvements valued at assessed at $13,000 less. Well, in order to build a room and smooth out the floor and paint the walls, Maybe it wouldn't cost 13,000, maybe it'd be 8,000 or 9,000, but it's hard to tell. And we're getting to very small variations. And uh, as much as I always appreciate appellants coming and jogging our memories and making us all collectively, you know, toe the line, I, I think it's way too small of, of a difference if there is one to, um, if there is one to, to make any change. That's my comment. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm with Ken. Uh, as far as you know, I think if you even look at the one next door and you and you and you figure there's a little bit better improved basement uh, on the subject property, it looks like there's a shed um, that you're kind of right there where the department was, or maybe you know within less than one percent if you try to make those adjustments. So uh, typically, we we would lean towards just confirming the, uh, the department's assessment. Okay, thank you. Um, well, let me tell you, yeah, I, went... I still... Oh. No, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. go ahead. No, I just, I guess I still struggle with the three comps, with the, um, the effective age, you know, and we're not talking about a lot of money, but, you know, it you know what may not be a lot of money to you is you know could be a lot of money to somebody else and so i don't think that that's a reason not to address it because we think the amount is too small you know we've certainly reduced even on a commercial property you know a much smaller amount but you know to me i don't know i don't think that these three comps when you look at the effective ages are really comparable to the subject property especially when you're talking about a, a property that's less than 900 square feet you know, to compare it against something that's 1,600 square feet, that's like night and day. And so the difference on a 900 square foot piece of property, you know, would certainly be much smaller than if we were looking at something that was 1,600 or 1,800 square feet. I, you know, I don't know. I just struggle of how it could be significantly higher. And to me, significant is that 13,000 above the house next door. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, the thing, you know, I drove by all the properties that were provided by the county and also by the appellant, 
uh, looked at all of them, and some of them, you know, totally did not compare. But uh, overall, I think, you know, look, the comparables themselves, they have more bathrooms, the basement has more square footage. So I, you know, I'm, I wasn't really too, I guess, too happy with those comparables with, uh, as far as the space itself and the quality of the homes. Uh, I looked at the pictures of the subject property when it was purchased and, you know, uh, everything looked in good condition, not the, the condition that we would see some of the renovated homes now, but um, mm -hmm. and my reaction was, well, the value is close, it's there, but, yeah, and I agree that, you know, in the past we've made the adjustments based on one sale, one comparable, uh, so I'm okay with uh, making the adjustment for this year, you know to uh, equalize, I guess, with the house next door. And I will just say, and this is the last that I'll say, you know, that small amount, I mean, when you look at $13,000 against 76.1, that's 17%. I mean, that's leaning towards 20% of the value. So yes, it is a small amount, but it's a significant amount of the total value assessed. Mm -hmm. So I said my piece, I'll see what the rest of you think. Any other comment? Anybody else? I think, I think it is a teardown in that same sense as what is probably the house next door. And it would probably sell for this value. I mean, that's that's what the market's doing. Um, I could go either way on it. It's I don't I think it would sell for this. I know that's not their objective. They want to live there. Um, anyway, that's the the two cents I have. I I don't think the improvement values. I understand they went up across the board. It's all really the land at this point. But that's what it'd sell for. Anyway. Yeah, I think the like Mary said, the difference is not much. But uh, yeah, I agree. You would sell at either price. Uh, but it depends on what you want to do with it. You know, if you're looking at most uh, as an investment to carry down like the other property on 7th Street, I think. Uh, yeah, you're going to sell it and you're probably going to put something, you know, a million and a half there. But uh, for this year, for what's there and what's with the neighbors, I think uh, making the adjustment is the proper way to do it. All right. Okay. All right, then I will go ahead and make a motion. And if there's support for it, it'll happen. And if it doesn't, it'll revert. Um, but I will move to reduce the uh, building portion of the assessment to 63.2 to equalize it with the house next door, which would do a total assessment of 638.2. Okay, we have a motion by Mary Dooley. I'll, I'll go ahead and second that motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have three and against. We have Mary, and Ken, and Greg. So we have three. No, Mary three. Hogan was a yes. I was a yes, Mark Yates. Oh, Mary Hogan was a yes. So we have yes. four. Okay, so I'm sorry. We have four votes in favor and two votes against. So the motion is passed. The reduction is being made by 638,200. Excuse me, who was against? The people are okay. against. Is Thank you. Ken and Greg. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, the reduction is being made to 638,200. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, we're going to go, we'll go to the last case. With no breaks, uh, RPC 02086002, 2807, Ghost Nation Drive. Do we have the uh, homeowner? I'm on, I think there's a problem with my camera. Oh, okay. So you can hear us and we can hear you. So, uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and you can start with your eight minutes, uh, Ms. Young. 
Thank you very much. I purchased the home in 2013. And for about five years before 2013, the property value remained around 550,000, give or take 10, it kind of went up and down. Since then, the property value has gone up $250,000, uh, which has, has climbed about 30 to $40,000 each year. When I looked at the comparable properties, um, the assessment that was done, Two of them have three bedrooms and three bathrooms and are assessed to be much more expensive than, than mine. Uh, I only have two bedrooms and one and a half baths. So to compare that size of a house to three bedrooms, three bedroom houses, I think is an unfair comparison. As you know, bedrooms and bathrooms add more value to the house. Uh, and so I just don't think that's a fair, uh, fair comparison. Uh, so that would be the, the last two on the list of four, 2815 North George Mason and 5058 27th Street North. The other two comparisons um, are more similar in size to my house. Um, one that sold most recently on 2804 North Edison Street, it sold in October. Uh, it sold for 20, 000, almost 20000 less than its assessed value at 800000 which is less than my assessed value, and they have much more land than I have. And since the bulk of the assessment is the land value, if they sold the house that was a hot part of the market for $800,000, I just don't see how mine could be at $809,000, which was a drop of a couple from what the original assessment was, which was eight eleven. Uh, so they have uh, over 8,000 square feet of property and I have 5,300 square feet of property. Uh, so if they sold 800, I think that mine should be valued at less than them. Uh, the other comparable property, which is closer in size to the size of the house and the size of the property is 2708 North George Mason Drive. And they sold um, a little while ago, about two years ago, for $760,000. And so mine is a tiny bit bigger than theirs. And so that's why I assess mine to be the same as last year, which is $791,000. I still think that's uh, quite a high assessment. And I honestly don't think I can probably sell the house for that for only two bedrooms and one and a half baths. If it was two full baths, that might be easier. Um, but I only have a partially finished basement and my yard um, part of it's unusable because every time it rains, it becomes a river. Um, so I actually have had to rip out the grass and put gravel there because uh, literally I have to clear the way so that it can become a river um, every time it rains. And because I have a dead end street, um, a lot of the services don't end up always coming here. Often our garbage doesn't get picked up. We have to call to make sure that happens. Our street doesn't get plowed. So there's a lot of things that aren't the greatest thing about being on a dead end street. Um, but that's basically the, the summary of it. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Ms. Yabar. You can start with your eight minutes. Is your microphone on? We can hear you. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is good Jorge morning. Miguel Yabar. I'm a real estate appraiser for Arlington County. <clears throat> Today, I will explain the 2020 evaluation for the property located at 2807 North George Mason Drive, RPC 020860002. Uh, the property was inspected in March 6, 2020. I did uh, an exterior inspection only due to several reasons. Um, for, at the beginning, the homeowner was not able to be home at the time of inspection and all. And after that, we, we have the quarantine issues. So I only did the exterior inspection, verify the measurements <clears throat> and confirm the, the improvements on the on the property. Um, this house is is a 5,397 square feet lot, R6. The current land valuation is 649,800. Uh, the actual building is a two-story brick built in 1944, uh, well-maintained and in good condition. The effective age is 1990 due to the renovations completed by the current and previous owner of this home. The house was purchased in 2013 for 680,000. A new front porch was completed in 2014. 
uh, the estimated cost of this porch was 20,000 according to permit records. Uh, also, plus interior updates to the kitchen. Uh, corrections were made to the sketch of the house to update the actual measurements of the porch. Uh, uh, we discovered a rear concrete patio. Uh, so that basically, the sketch was updated to make it, to make more accurate measurements of the house. Uh, the owner requests a review of the assessment value of the property. This request was attended, and as a result, the evaluation was reduced on the improvement part down to $809,000 for 2020. This valuation represents a 2.3% increase compared to the 2019 valuation, which actually is fully representing the land increase for the neighborhood, which is actually was 2.5% in this neighborhood. It went up in, from $635,000 in 2019 to $660,000 in 2020. And that was close to 2.5% increase for the whole neighborhood. And this property also went up 2.3%, which actually is basically the land value increase. Uh, the improvement value actually after the revision went down. And that's the reason why the total assessment has to be uh, <clears throat> reduced to 809000 for 2020. Um, I just want to point out that this house located on George, George Mansion Drive actually is on the last uh, section of George Mansion Drive, way up north, uh, close to the intersection with Yorktown Boulevard. <clears throat> this remaining section of George Mason Drive actually uh, has a dead end and thus a much more quiet section of the, of the street compared to the busy uh, road, which is George Mason Drive. We know that it's a major uh, road in Arlington County and the properties located at George Mason Drive are actually receiving a 5% negative adjustment to the land. And that might explain the reason why some of the properties I presented as a comps are on the land value section are being valued slightly lower. The remaining section of your mission drive is not receiving that 5% adjustment. That might also support the higher land valuation for, for the size. And again, my recommendation to the board is that we have addressed the homeowner request and we have revised the value for 2020 to $809,000. And we consider this to be fair for an equitable for this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board to the county or to the appellant? Uh, I only had one question, Mr. Yabar, uh, in reference yes. to the reduction. Was that reduction only made based on the quality from uh, good uh, to good miners? Min uh, yes. No. The, I, yes. Um, the reduction I propose is just to the building value, to the improvement value, based on the conditions of the property. I didn't have the, the, the chance to go to the inside of the house, but the homeowner was kind enough to show me some pictures of interior, basically. <clears throat> to, and also, I reviewed the previous real estate listing from 2013. So I, to have a, a better understanding of the conditions of the house from the interior. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I review the comp number four, provide, uh, which is on page five of the package. That property was sold in 2018, which actually is uh, before, I mean, it's, it's a much older sale, but that was pointed out by the homeowner as a, as a real comp of his house. She mentioned this property, so I, I, in, I included this sale on as a comp. And I just want to mention that, yes, the condition of these two houses are similar, but the major difference in the total assessment is directly related to the land valuation. Um, this house is also in George Mason Drive, but is on a much a busier section of the road is the traffic is much much more intense where this house is located compared to where the subject is located and also 
um, the lower sales price is related to the smaller size of this home. It's slightly smaller compared to the subject. I know you don't look at the number of bedrooms. Uh, I know you look at the square footage. Uh, how, about yes. the, how about the bathroom? There's an, what is the difference between one and a half and two bathrooms as far as assessments? Yes, um, some of these houses actually were renovated right after they were purchased. Uh, we, can, we understand that they might have an additional bathroom probably in the basement, probably they, they decide to add a bathroom upstairs. Um, I would say the difference will be somewhere between ten to $20,000. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars difference for an additional bathroom in this neighborhood. That but, might not, be. but not uh, a house that has one and a half bathrooms against one that has two bathrooms. It's not ten or twenty thousand. Probably, probably will be somewhere between five to ten thousand dollars. Not much than that. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, any other questions? No, no one? Okay. Um, seems like we have enough information. Uh, if there are no questions, we'll go to wrap-ups. And we'll start with Mr. Yabar. Uh, yes. So I just want to <clears throat> mention that I have received the, uh, the request of the owner. I did my best to visit the property, do an, do a, an appraisal of the house use the most recent sales data to compare this home to recent sales and adjust the assessment for 2020 to eight hundred and nine thousand dollars and the department recommends to to confirm this assessment for 2020 thank you thank you uh, we'll go to uh one minute uh, wrap up Ms. Uh, young you can go ahead and start with you one minute Thank you very much. Uh, the joy of being on a dead end street means that you don't get as many government services on that street. So that is a trade off from being on the busier side of George Mason, because I do watch the snow plows circle around George Mason and never come down our street. The house that is on Edison Street is on a side, a quiet side street, and they have 2,700 more square feet of land than I have, and they're valued at $800,000. And they have flat land and they don't have a flooding problem. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's uh, among the board members and uh, see where we stand and uh, any comments before we make any decisions. No one. Um, I'm going to make a comment as far as the reduction. I think, you know, uh, it is very tiny, very close to what it was before, but. Uh, I looked at the assessments on the comparables, the uh, one that was provided, obviously, uh, the one on Edison Street. Uh, the assessment at 819.3 and also the assessment for, um, I think, another property that I have here in mind that it went away. Um, the reason I was asking about the number of bathrooms, because that's the only difference really I saw is that, you know, uh, one and a half bathrooms as opposed to two bathrooms, which is, you know, to someone, it means a lot to have a full bathroom against just a half. But uh, as far as assessment, yeah, I agree with the county. It's not going to be a major assess, you know, major value as far as the numbers. But uh, uh, I, I'm okay with the revision that was done in this uh, case. Go ahead, Ken. A question. Uh, we, from time to time, uh, hear cases where Houses are built on a hill and the backyard is too sloped, forgetting about to be buildable, but not even really particularly usable, except maybe, you know, in the winter for uh, snow sledding. In this case, sometimes the backyard isn't very usable because of a creek going through it. Do you think that rises, but it's temporary, it's time to time, um, but can interfere with backyard enjoyment. Do you think that rises to the level of some adjustment in this case versus the steep slopes cases, which we hear far more often? Comments from anybody? Uh, 
I'm not sure. I mean, we haven't really been presented to with a lot of the information that that is affecting any value. So I'm not. Uh, I guess it, it could affect uh, the usability, but uh, from my experience, people will still buy the properties, you know, knowing that they may be limited a little bit more than the neighbor or, you know, the street across or, you know, one block away or something. So I'm not really sure that uh, it would uh, warrant any adjustment based on that right now. I mean, you could make the case, well, if you channel the water, it's kind of a cool water feature. And uh, as long as it's not going through, you know, kids' playgrounds. So, I mean, it's 50-50. They just wanted to throw it up for anybody's initial reaction. And then, of course, if we did decide that perhaps it was a disadvantage, could we possibly come up with a percentage, uh, you know, discount like they do for standard for traffic noise and building on hills? Anybody else or is that the end of that? I would just say, I think we got to be careful looking at anecdotal kind of comments about, I have a lot of standing water in my yard when it rains versus what an actual designated RPA is. Um, you know, there's something that's been surveyed and, and yes, I do have a creek and there's a buffer and I cannot build because I have this buffer. Like we get those cases a lot, like you said, um, but I think, you know, we had another appellant come in today, Mr. Kuhn, who said that he was damaged by the flood. So how much of that is, you know, a flood? How much of it is a real permanent issue? I know with this lot, it's, it's you know, these are like 5,000 square foot lots. Um, so I don't really think it's holding back any potential additions to the building by having some water back there um, relative to the other properties, because everything, or at least three of the comparables are all kind of non-conforming R6 lots. They're under under 6,000 square feet. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't see a real reason to look at it in this case. I think what's more relevant to the value of the home is the location being on a, like, kind of a quieter cul-de-sac uh, versus being on the busy road on George Mason. Thanks. Right, I'd agree with Greg. Um, just because, I mean, in, you look at all the uh, adjacent properties. I mean, if that was an issue in the neighborhood, I think we would hear from more people, you know, or if there was, you know, additional evidence with pictures or something that the flooding was really that severe, I think then it would be something that the county would have to look into. But without that, I wouldn't feel comfortable making an adjustment for that. You know, and the argument about the cul de sac, you know, we hear that a lot. Some people like the cul-de-sac because it's quieter and your kids can be out there playing and it's, you know, somewhat safer. You know, in this case, you know, that brings up the issue that, you know, maybe all the services, you know, aren't given quite as timely, you know, on that type of street. But, you know, when I look at the sales, I, I don't think it's necessarily affecting the marketability of it. So I, I'm somewhat struggling with seeing a reduction. Okay. Anybody else? Any other comment? Yeah, I mean, the only other thing that jumped out, and uh, you know, the neighbor's not complaining, but it's it's the house directly behind it is like the lot is like twice the size, and the land value was was only like five thousand dollars more. Just in it seemed like a whack. I'm not sure. RPCO twenty eighty six o eighteen land at six fifty three four. And the subject was 649.8. That's a 10,000 foot lot. Right, that's a good point. And also the property right next to it, um, ending in RPC 003. I don't know what the square footage is, but that's also at the same, it, it looks larger on the flat map. Yeah, it's like George Mason is kind of all equalized with George Mason, and then I think that's Dinwiddie to the east. That those, I feel like those lots are just so much bigger, but maybe it's a different neighborhood classification. There might be something going on there, but I don't, you know, I don't really think it affects this property as much as the other ones. Different neighborhood. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Is that a school zone issue? I 
we'll make that a rhetorical question and we can just <laughs> <laughs> for anybody that would that would bring a, an answer okay. out of a hat. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other comments? Having no other comments, any motions? Anybody feels any different? Well, not having anything else, I'm going to make a motion that we confirm the revised uh, assessment uh, in this case at uh, 809,000. Second. We have a motion uh, <clears throat> and a second by Ken. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Are you in, Mark? Yes, I. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second that uh, to confirm the assessment. Everybody's in favor. So the motion is passed. The assessment is being confirmed for this year, Ms. Young. And uh, we'll see what happens for next year. Thank you. All right, do we have anything else on the agenda for this uh, morning? No, I have one real quick thing. Uh, actually, question. I'm, I may be a little late tomorrow morning. If I miss the first case, can I just jump in? Yes, yes. You okay, can you jump can in, jump in if you The only thing you won't be able to do is uh, vote on it if you haven't heard the whole, you know, full case, the full presentation. Okay. I'm hoping to be on time, but if I'm running late, I'll, I'll listen in on the first case I hear, and then the first full one I'll be able to vote. Okay. Okay. All right. Quick, quick question, just to improve my life a tiny little bit. Uh, which of the two that we have left over today is rescinded? I know Rosa told us in an email that some I'm sure could tell me in a second. <laughs> which one's deferred? Which one's canceled? The one that was the second case. The second case is withdrawn, and the first case is rescheduled for tomorrow. Well, what, what, what's the, the last three digits of the RPC that is withdrawn? Uh, two, three, three, nine. Three, nine. Good, thank you. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye. We'll see. Before you hang up.